Welcome back to Phase 2 Podcast. Uh, bro, what episode are we on today? Five, brother. Episode five. five. episodes. It's hard to believe that we've come this far in such a short amount of time. A lot of people say we wouldn't make it. So, uh, episode five, that means we've been doing it for over a month. Right. Yeah. And here we are. So, awesome. Well, today I'd like to announce our very special guest. Great friend of ours, awesome guy, um, fellow half Korean. Boom. Which, yeah. you know, we're unicorns. There's not a lot of us out they here. Aren't. And uh, uh, model, actor, mm. and just an awesome human being, uh, Dave McGinnis. Welcome to the show, brother. What's going on? Thank you for having me. Awesome. Glad to have you here. No, man. It's, uh, I know you're busy, man. And I appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to come over here and uh, shoot the shit with us, man. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, so first things, we have a big change today mm. in the podcast. We, we were talking to a little bit earlier. Not everyone was happy with it. Uh, but I think I think it's going to play well. Is I think it? it's going to pull well. <laughs> um, I, we've switched we've switched chairs. Mm. So now I'm in the I'm in the Game of Thrones, the captain seat, the long chair. Yeah. I'm in the Iron Throne. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, you look good. The Dragon you, Throne. You look great in there. <laughs> I mean, does it suit you? Yeah. I mean, it looks like the right size for you too. Yeah, it's, you, know, you know what I'm saying. It's cool because when I was in, I used to be in your chair. Mm. This is a little narrow. It's a little narrow, and you know I got long legs, so I'm always yeah. bumping up against stuff. And uh, you are a tall drink of water. And my brother actually never told me how comfortable it was on the side. See, I feel like if I would have said something, then this would happen. And now I'm not sure if I'll ever get the chair. Oh, back. Oh, you're never getting the chair back. See, that's what happens. <laughs> if you have a little brother, right, and then he sees something that's nice, you'll never get it back. Never. Oh man. <laughs> I will not relinquish. <laughs> it's tough being the older brother, huh? Dave, there's some things about being the older brother. <laughs> What's the perks? <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm still trying to figure that out. <laughs> but you're you're an only child, though, right? I'm an only child. Do you ever wish you had any brothers? You wish you had a guy like him following you around? Not really. No. Wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> Just the tag along. I have a lot of good friends like you guys, uh -huh. and I think I've been blessed with just. Yeah, I didn't have any friends actually growing up. Get out like, of here. No, I can see that. I was a bit of a loner. <laughs> yeah, you can see that for sure. It's got written all over my forehead. Uh, yeah, but, uh, you know, didn't have too many. I mean, I grew up in a small town in Antigo, Wisconsin. Uh -huh. hmm. The town was 8,000 people, but I lived 15 miles outside of that town called Bryant, unincorporated. Wow. So there wasn't too many kids. Shout around. out to our, our listeners in Wisconsin. There you go. Uh, yeah. Cheeseheads. Wisconsin. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, it's interesting because, so I had always thought because your mom, who I visited because my wife's from Hawaii and I visit your mom every time I go back. Awesome lady. Uh, she loves you. And she always takes yeah. us out to this, the best food. Your uh, mom, she, takes, she took us out to poke. She took us out to all the good stuff. The local grinds. Well, the Ono grinds, brother. The Ono grinds, brother. Oh. Um, so I, for just knowing you and you just kind of feel like that vibe, that Hawaii vibe. Right, right. It's weird to think that you actually didn't grow up in Hawaii for the whole time. You have these real humble Midwestern roots. Right. Yeah. I mean, I started traveling to Hawaii when I was eight years old and okay. I would do, I would actually do a couple of school years there and then I would go every summer and I always flip back and forth. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, my roots are definitely from Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Um, my family is, uh, all from Wisconsin on my mm -hmm. dad's side. Mm -hmm. And I have family here in, in Korea. So. so then when you think about it, because you kind of grew up in these two very, very, well, I mean, are they different? Or are, yeah. are there are there's some yeah. others? I, mean, I would say so. I think, you know, actually, just, just the first time I'm thinking about it right now, they are different, but they're also very, very alike because it's a small town atmosphere. Right. Kind of right. country, like kind roots. of family. There's roots there, you know. You have that Wisconsin roots of just... Yeah, it's family. It's it's small. Um, and then in Hawaii, you have that aina, the mm -hmm. island, mm -hmm. you know, kind of family. Mm -hmm. It's very big. Family is very very big. So which yeah. place feels more like home? Uh, definitely Hawaii. I don't right. go back to Wisconsin. I left Wisconsin when I was seventeen and I never gotcha. went back really. Because wow. back just to see my family in Milwaukee mm -hmm. and Antigo, Wisconsin. I haven't gone back since I was 20. Do you think it's changed very much since the time you left? No, not at all. <laughs> not. <laughs> not one bit. Because our dad. Go, and they might have one, well, they might have one uh, stoplight. 
more. See, it's funny because like our dad is from Upper Peninsula, Michigan. Probably right? not so different. And his his town had like what, like fifty people. He said his graduating class had like twenty some people when he graduated from high school. Right? Is that right? So he's from like wow. a small, small place. And like I think there was only one traffic light there as well. Well, I think it's interesting with my dad's city, Norway, Michigan. Shout out. Boom. Um, Normally, as time marches on, like Seattle's gotten much bigger since we right, were kids. Right, right. Seoul, since we used to travel to Seoul as crazy. children, it's gotten, you know, yeah. it's enormous. It's crazy. Super, super city. I think dad's city in, has actually gone backwards. Like, I think mm. there, there's less people that live there. They might even have torn down the, the one traffic light and put up a stop sign. <laughs> like, right. it's kind of gone yeah, they, backwards, they, actually. They, you, the population goes down a few thousand. Right. Every, every, every Everyone day. moves out. Yeah, All yeah. the industry dies. And, you know, it's kind of like the story of the Rust Belt, kind of the Midwest mm. kind of story. It's inter- it's really interesting. It's going to turn into Italy where they're just giving away land so people <clears throat> can live there again. Yes. Yeah, I remember a couple of years ago we were looking because uh, you know, our, our dad's um, uh, family's from Italy. So, like, they're from the northern part. And we were looking at land out there. We are thinking about... They were like on like eBay and like like other, like Craigslist. They were selling like cities for like what was it like five hundred grand or something. Yeah, like, but you like, could never move out. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that, you're right. They advertise them on on like social media, like right. the internet, and you right. get these banner ads or whatever. And then you're like, wow, I could afford that. That's the same price as a house. But right. then when you look at the actual, right. they right. like you have to settle there. You have to move there. You have to improve the land. They give you like, so even though you get in for like. 300 grand or whatever, you have to improve these old medieval castles, which is a huge. I heard it's really easy. Yeah. But which costs like a lot of money. I was watched, I watched one episode where the, there was a gigantic castle in a beautiful area and they were just basically giving it away. But it would cost like, I don't know how many millions and millions of dollars for renovation. Yeah, but like, you know, I mean, a lot of people, they may not know this, but you love working with your hands. So like I mean a project like that would probably be something to be right up your alley because like home improvements like finding this kind of stuff like I mean what like is that something that would I don't know fixing up a blazer might be a little different uh, than fixing up a medieval castle Well you know I think a lot I think some tend Same. to think a lot of things up my alley and then I'm just like it's too much for my head to chew off Is that right head to chew off uh, for, my, for me to bite off mm. big chunk for me to bite off yeah, you might be biting off more than yeah, you can chew. chew. Yeah, see, I'm in <laughs> Korea too long. We're, we're, we're putting I everything. I do that too, man. I do that all the backwards. time. Yeah. Uh, but I do like building things, you know, and that one thing I do yeah. miss about, I mean, I love living here in Seoul, um, but I do miss a garage. I miss, mm-hmm. you know, my power tools. Definitely. Making a mess, making a right. lot of noise, um, building things from nothing. Like when I had that project with the Blazer, that was great. Um, right, because I remember like looking at your Instagram stories and it was like, you know, you're doing like this awesome rebuild. You and your dad like totally like found this uh, like project, yeah. totally like made it like dope. And then you took it back and turned it into like a, like you were- Like an, know, an like, adventure like, mobile, yeah, man. It was, it was just, yeah. it was it's dope. One of my things when I was a kid, I'd always loved blazers. And um, when I was real, real young, I just remember seeing a 71 blazer. It was mustard with a white top. It was all rusty. And I was like, oh, man, what's that, Dad? And he said, that's a blazer. And ever since then, I've been in love with blazers. Really? And so I, I bought, now they're very, very expensive. Mm. Uh, so you really can't touch touch like a 69, a 72 blazer for. What know, is it? It's a K, what is K5. it? K5. K5. Yeah, okay. so I got, I you know, I went and got the, it's called the um, the square body. Square body trucks mm-hmm. in the 80s mm-hmm. are very, are very like, you know, they, at first they were really ugly and like people didn't really understand them. Um, and now they're really sought after. Gotcha. And so I was able to get a square body K5 1990. That's crazy. a really good price. And that's, that's a great year too. Yeah, 90. Yeah, I graduated high school in 92. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but that really, I got a good deal. It was in Denver, Colorado. And it came with an LS1 Corvette engine. So I, I think I <laughs> So maybe it. The, guy, the guy who you bought it from was already fixing it up, like kind of doing it yourself. The guy bought it, it up. Exactly. He had it in Wyoming. So it, Wyoming is a very dry. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, so the car's in good condition. It was to do this. No like rust. Zero. That's like the cars. See, like I remember, okay, so my brother Correct. is like also like, maybe a lot of people don't know. My brother like is a, like, he likes these classic cars a lot. His first car I was do. a, was a 62? 62 Impala. A 62 Beautiful Impala four car. door. Wow. So it's like, you know, a lot of people are looking for the two door. He yeah. found a four door. And like this lady that he got off of didn't even really know what she had. I remember like you were talking to her and what did you buy for like five grand or something? Yeah, it was like then? five grand. Now these, 
you know, and it was perfect condition, you know, yeah. uh, grandma only drove to the, you know, once a week to the supermarket. So it was like, I think it was a 40 year old car and it had like 40,000 miles. So she was going an average oh of a thousand miles a year on this car. The crazy thing too is like, you know, we're from Seattle. And so usually cars like this, like it's really hard to maintain because of rust and like wear and tear. But like we were, when we were looking for these cars, we found out that like in the Midwest and some of these drier climates, like the cars preserve better. Is that like, yeah, they definitely, right? yeah, you don't have the moisture. Gotcha. Yeah, and then a lot of times when you're like on the coast, you'll get the salt air mm. mixture with that. And um, so Hawaii's got to be terrible for Hawaii's, not Hawaii's really terrible good. for everything. Like, <laughs> right. there's yeah, so many rust buckets driving around in Hawaii. It's not good. Why would I like? And I wonder because you know our good our good friend Derek, he's got a pretty nice car, Range Rover. I wonder oh, yeah. what that salt air is doing to that. I you know I don't know, or but I, he's, he's leasing it, so I think. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I think he's he's good there, but uh, you know I think. We had a car we brought over from the mainland and brought mm. it over there. And just, if it already has rust, it's just going to corrode. Really? Yeah. Well, I wonder, like, yeah. I mean, anyways, let's uh, back to your project. So you basically turn this into like a car you can live in. Like you can, you turn the blazer, you, you redid the whole back. It's beautiful with wood. Um, is the project finished? No. No, it's not. not oh, so what are you trying to do? Are you trying to put a bathroom in there? What are you trying to do in there? <laughs> I remember you looking at bathrooms though. I, I got a toilet for it. It's in the box. Oh, you do have a bathroom in there. I was joking. <laughs> no. I have a toilet. Yeah. Okay. I, bought, I bought it in the box. It's still I, I needed to, to rearrange some things in there. Uh, when I built it, it it needs some things need to be shifted. Um and then uh, a pop top roof. So I want to cut a hole in the top and I want to put um a, a like a it's like um like the tent. Volkswagens, like they have the, they have it on the the old school Volkswagens. Exactly. So like I a bed up there. put a pop top tent up there, and then my whole thing was, <clears throat> I just wanted to do van life. I fell in love with all, oh, like dude. everybody. That right? is like one of the things that I've I would love to do like a year and just travel in a van. Yeah, like one of the, right before Dan came back, I remember you were looking hardcore. Oh, at, hardcore, hardcore, yeah. like the Volkswagens and yeah. like those old you know like camper type like vans, like doing the van life. Yeah, see, but I wanted to, yeah, we talked about that. Yeah. But I wanted to do van life without the van. Right. Blazer's way cooler. <laughs> way cooler. A van's yeah. not cool. Once you get off your road trip portion and you get in, you pull into town, you don't want the van anymore. You well, want yeah. the Blazer. The Blazer's cool. The Bla Blazer's cool. And so I did 40 days. I wanted to do 50 days living in the street. I went to LA and I I thought, oh, this is a good opportunity for you to do van life in my mm -hmm, Blazer. Mm -hmm. So I, I went down to LA and... It's funny when you're on the streets, you're you know you 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 can you can see who's living in their cars, and there's like you know four different types of people living in a, that live on the street, right? I live on okay. yeah. There's people that have a mobile home, and mm -hmm. they're kind of like the older ones you might see in Venice and all that. Right. Mm -hmm. Then you have people that live in a van. Mm -hmm. um, there's some that sleep under awnings, right? Oh, okay. Like, like there's there, mm -hmm. and then there's tenters. Like the guys that live in tents on the side of the street, you might have seen in the news or in LA. Mm -hmm. that they, we got a lot in Seattle. Yeah. The tenters are very young people. They're the backpackers. You, you, they're, they're like, yeah, they're a little bit more like on the edge. Mm -hmm. Whereas I found like, yeah, you could just, in the mornings when I had to go pee mm -hmm. and do my thing, coffee, you could see them on the streets. And so there's like it's kind of like you're like, what's up? So there's like a community then. Did, you, did you meet any cool people? Well, uh, not really. <laughs> <laughs> just gotta stick to yourself. Yeah, I was sticking myself. Come on, tenters. You're, I got a, I got a, I got a vehicle. Well, I think what it is is when you live in your car in the city, you have to find a neighborhood that you feel comfortable sleeping. Uh -huh. You have to find a place that you can use the restroom, like a Starbucks, like a nice Starbucks. Twenty four hour fitness. And then you, for twenty four hour fitness, you need to go there and take a shower and, and, take shower and like mm -hmm. work out and stuff. So I had a whole system. Mm -hmm. It was going great, and then the like COVID nineteen hit, and then I just. I couldn't, first it started with like, you, you you can't go to the bathroom there. Well, first it started with my takeout coffee cups. Like you can't have a takeout coffee cup. You have to buy the cup there. And then it started with like, you can't use the bathroom. Now it's closed and then social distance, distancing. Then it was like, the gyms were closed. Then uh, I was like. That's right. Cause you were, you did the project basically like, and then COVID like just exploded. Yeah. In the yeah. midst. So yeah. you saw the whole thing like develop when you were in LA. Yeah, and you're probably hearing about what stuff was going on over here and everything like that. Yeah, it was it was, it was wild. I was, and then I was sitting in the blazer. <laughs> and I thought to myself, "Man, I am the worst person for this situation right now." <laughs> How so? I can't. 
use any public restrooms because they're all uh -huh. closed. Uh -huh. I can't take a shower because they're all closed. Okay. So what am I going to do? I said, I, I guess van life has now ended for me. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> that's interesting. Hmm. Because van life only really works when you can like go to like a public, like, I don't know, campground, take a shower. Or, yeah, unless I had something. unless I had a van with a shower. Right. That's the advantages of having a van or like Is that what you're trying to put in when you say it's not finished? Um, I can put a shower in it. I don't want to live in my car again. <laughs> <laughs> but Interesting. Uh, I I will do a, a few days. I mean, that was a crazy it was actually to think about it to do forty days in there. Because when I first got That's to wild. LA with with Dutch who's Well, she came later. My first three weeks. Oh, okay. uh, it was like thirty seven degrees at night in LA. So I was sleeping and I didn't have everything properly, no heat. And I would, so what did you do? Keep the car on? No, I couldn't because the car is really loud. So I and your car burns gas like yeah. what? Well, like it's not too bad actually. Is um, it? Because it's newer. It's like a two thousand motor, so it's not as bad. But I would like have this big down jacket and like like igloo myself around in it. Uh -huh. that. Yeah. But then you ended up putting like some insulation in later, right? And then like making it so it was like warmer and stuff. I remember. Yeah. I remember the process. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing was, is I wasn't ready to go to LA, but I needed to be there to see family. So I was building at Home Depot and like, I was going in inside to go grab wood. I and love cutting. Home Depot, by the way. Uh, I dude, love it's, Home it's, Depot. It's, they got it's the shit. Yeah. But I'm sitting there cutting in the, in, the, in the parking lot. I did meet someone really cool, actually. This guy, um, he, he has tiny, tiny truck home, tiny truck. You can look up on YouTube. He's got a really cool um, tiny truck home, tiny he, trum, truck home. And he was building there with you? Well, he was. I saw him in the in the in the, in the, in the Home Depot and kind of like you know we walked by each other. And like, oh, like a guy you've you've been following on Instagram, and then you see him in real life. No, no, no. It's just a random dude. He was like he's like late twenties. Turns uh -huh. out he's a software maker. Uh huh. Um, he works out of his truck or at Starbucks. And then I saw him, and then we kind of like you know, and then he was outside working on his big ass truck, and I was working on mine, and we kind of like yo, kind of the eyebrows went up and kind of bonded. Yeah, and he was like, yo, what, so what are you what are you what are you building over here? What are you trying to build? I'm like, what are you oh doing? God, and then and then he was like, then he was showing me shit, and then he was like, man, you got to get the piano hitches because I was dude, making. I love a, it. I love it. Yeah, the piano hitches. You know about them? No, I just love this situation because it happens at Home Depot. <laughs> Relationships are built in the aisles of Home Depot. Because you need help. You, no, you, but I really think that like this kind of thing. I don't know where else it could happen. Because Eric, Depot's you like had a, you, you had like a bromance with a guy. We were like remodeling. <laughs> oh, you house. guys did that whole and thing. Eric, mission. same thing. Like yeah. Eric became like this tile freak. He did a deep dive. It was on YouTube <laughs> well, every day. I'm obsessed. And then at Home Depot, he meets this guy, and they're like tile buddies, like talking to each other, <laughs> exchanging email. That's it was awesome. crazy because he was like, "Yeah, you looking for extra work?" And he's like, "You know, I got, I got, you know, I'm just overloaded right now. I got a couple of jobs, man. Are you interested?" <laughs> he was trying to throw me work, and I'm like. But if that's it, awesome. Bro. But if this guy knew that I just started doing tile like a month ago, <laughs> yeah. Like, but your place looks great. I mean, uh, yeah, you, yeah, so you guys, if you, if you guys don't know, they they you know you guys renovated a duplex. You bought this yeah. duplex and you yeah. completely gutted, gutted everything out. Yeah. Took you six months, right? Six months. And you guys did everything it, yourself. It shouldn't yeah. take six months, but you know, you get better as you, you like. We definitely got better doing it, but going in knowing nothing, it took us six months. I think if we did it again, it would right. be like three months of yeah, hard work. Yeah. Well, it's yeah, like the okay. first the first one took us probably like four, and I think the next one took us like yeah, like yeah, like a couple yeah, like a month. Because like I mean, the first time we, we like we literally knew nothing, like and we hired this guy to come in. And like, see, you're in advance because like, you know, you worked with your dad on trucks and stuff. So a lot of the know how you already had, like we were starting from zero. Like we're like, I have confidence I can pound a nail in and that's yeah. about it. So like we're going into to Home Depot and like, yeah, we need like the plastic thingy that does the other thingy in the bathroom. And then like somehow in Home Depot, they know what you mean. It's like, like, oh, you're looking for, you're looking for disposable trowel. Uh, okay. We got these on aisle. Yeah. Because there's other people <laughs> looking for the thingy. Yeah. Right. The thingy. <laughs> So it's like you go in there, you don't even know what it's called, but everything has a name, right? Ah, mm -hmm. yes. It's like, oh yeah, aisle twenty four on the left hand side, right after the uh, the bolt nuts. We're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Right. But like, how many times did you guys go back and forth to from your home to the Home Depot? Because then you had to go back to get a oh, nut and bolt. That's just every day. That's just every day. This is why it's par doing it in the parking lot yeah. is key because every time I forgot something, I go back in and go buy it and go back out. If we could have return our, it, if we could have moved our if duplex we, to the parking lot, <laughs> yeah, our duplex is not moving. But yeah, did you man. did you get any so? Doing this project, like Eric definitely got awesome at tile. I got really good at flooring and yeah. stuff like that. Drywalling. Dry, like mudding, which is yeah. fucking Bro, fool. I like, wouldn't recommend it. 
what what would you say like is your skill now like from from doing your mm. is it like i saw you doing some work with the jigsaw and like some stuff like that like you're sawing because you had a lot of round uh things that you had to go around yeah. when you're cutting man. those are difficult cuts man i'm yeah. good at 90 degree cuts. is that right yeah <laughs> um i i you know jigsaw is probably one of my favorite tools the jigsaw because mm -hmm. you could just do anything with it you can you know make all your cuts and, and, and make them round and stuff i think what I learned on this one was that kind of like, like bet I made of the of the bench uh -huh. that could popped out. That bench was dope. Yeah. yeah, and that was kind of this like, you know, sleeping in your truck. You have a lot of time to think about what you do in your truck. Uh -huh. <laughs> so um, that was I was pretty, I was pretty happy with that. And um, so I think learning how to kind of make angles uh -huh. and make make that kind of st the stuff work. But I always made a mistake. Yeah. It's fun though, like when you when you when you got a project that you're you're just learning every day. It's like you you'll do something and then you'll learn a new tool and you're like, oh, I wish I could do that over again because I know I could do it better. Well, like, it, you know? but what I think what, what the, the two things I learned is a when you do master skill and like say you're making a cut and it fits perfectly. Oh, yeah. man. After eighteen bad <laughs> things, it feels so great. But also, you know, we get perfectionist and we get really detail oriented. Right. 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 A little, a little putty, and you can fix any mistake. Right. Like you right. know, if things aren't exactly perfect, it's not the end of the world. No, but you can make it work, man. Jerry rig it. But the right. most gratifying, the most gratifying feeling is when you're working with wood mm -hmm. and you sand it down, oh. and then you just take your hand and go. Shh. Yes, <laughs> yes, that's nice. <laughs> that's the best. That's that smooth is. as a baby's boob. Uh, but 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 but. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> no, so. Um, uh, so let's just, let me transition a little bit because Dave, so we're, we're talking about all this stuff and it sounds like you live somewhere out in Montana, which is, which is more like your roots. But actually when I met you, you were living in New York, you were back and forth between New York and LA. That's like, right. You like I ran into you in the street. Yeah. Oh my God. That's, that's hilarious. I ran into him and I never go to New York. That was like the second time I'd ever just been hanging out in New York. It's not the you're in Bowery, Bowery, uh, Bowery, Bowery Street. Yeah, and you were you were like the local running to you. You're going to like that was my hood. Friend. That and was my hood. I was getting guided around by my buddy from Jersey, actually, and yeah. he was like showing me some restaurants and you know stuff like that. I I knew nothing about New York, and I think growing up in Seattle, and which is kind of a city but kind of country, my dream was always like these big cities that you see in the movies, like L.A., New York. And you've lived in both of those, and now you live in Seoul, which is yeah. one of the right. powerful cities of Asia. So what's it like to be a New Yorker? Like, do you miss that that kind of life too, that 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 atmosphere of that city? Uh, I, I miss the energy. I miss like the um, the friendliness. I mean, you might think it's un, it's like not friendly, but it's actually people, when you say what's up, they like engage. Yeah. I miss that. I miss that engagement. I miss um, I miss this you know, just grab my drink, happy hour, hanging out. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Work, work was really cool. Yeah. Just working there, people are just, the energy's on fire. It's probably cool because like you're in a community like there, right? And I know that like, it's been difficult for, to find that type of a community. Like it's weird, like, like you go to like a lot of these other cities, you go to Shanghai, New York, LA, there's like these social communities that you can kind of dig into, whether you're an actor, a model, or just a, a businessman. You can find a group of people that you can go do stuff with. And it seems like in Seoul, for some reason, that's a little difficult to find. Mm. Yeah, <clears throat> definitely know? being like part of a smaller foreigner community. Right. right. Well, I think with Seoul, I really appreciate the the chong that's 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 earned and like developed over like when you spend time with some people right. and you have drinks and food. You it you know, go to it was a icha icha some cha like you have you build those. Right. Yeah, it's just an interesting way. A lot of sachas. A lot of sachas. <laughs> oh man. You'd be hurt the next day. But um, I was going to say about New York, New York is like a land of the misfits, at least when I went there in 97. Uh -huh. And it was people from all over the world that just maybe they just wanted something different or they didn't really feel like their hometown was where they needed to be and they wanted to change. For me, it was like I wanted to find what I wanted to do with my life and find for who I was. So moving to New York definitely, I mean... The first day I was, the first, I used to have this dream where I was punching like a, I mean, I had this dream since I was a kid, mm -hmm. like 
where I was punching this faceless guy, you know, it's just like this dream and they would wake me up because I had no power, right? Mm-hmm. I just, it would, it would, the punches would just go straight through. It was like a, like just like a silhouette. Hmm. And then the first night, no shit, the first night I, I slept in New York, I made that journey. I knocked that motherfucker out one punch. <laughs> you know, and then and I was, I never had it again. I never had it again. Like it, it was, it was just some, that, that's, that's special. Did he have experience. it coming or did you just, I got to get this dream Oh, he had it coming. He had it coming? I mean, come on. I, I got started getting that dream at eight years old. Okay. Yeah, so. So you were waiting to meet this motherfucker in New York and you, you first night you got in there, you knocked him out? Knocked him out. First, first night's sleep. <laughs> um, so <laughs> tell, us, tell us a little bit like the story you moved to New York because you're not from New York. Do, yeah. you, do you have family in New York? What? Yeah. You just went there to try something new. Did you know that you were going to get into modeling and acting? Was that like a goal to go to school or something? I, I wanted to go to college. So I it was in the Air Force. I got in the Air Force and I wanted to go to college because I felt like I had missed a lot of time, four years, you know. And not Hawaii or Wisconsin? Well. At that time. I, I went to six six months of uh, a, a semester at uh, uh, Kapiolani Community College. Okay. And then... Hawaii, I was like, you know, I want to go to New York. Like, I want to go to New York since I was 18. Mm-hmm. But this is the time to go, but I want to go to college. Mm-hmm. You know, I wanted to, uh, f- I thought maybe I would do land in business or, you know, do something in Wall Street. Mm-hmm. And whatever it was, I just needed to get there. So I asked my mom, well, I got laid off. I got fired and I laid off from uh, Polo Ralph Lauren. I was selling retail. Mm-hmm. And I thought, well, shit, I'm getting, I'm getting some money. Like, I think it was like $300 a week or something like that. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, I can go to New York now, I guess. And then <clears throat> I moved there with like, yeah. And then uh, I asked my mom, I said, do you know anybody in New York? Do you know anybody? And she's like, no, I know a Moksin and a Samanim, like a, uh-huh. a, yeah, a minister pastor, and his right? wife, pastor. And I stayed with them for a week. And then I ended up staying with my cousin's really good friends, like family, that my family's known their family. Mm-hmm. And they had a great place on 32nd Street. And I stayed with uh, with um, Nadia Stefano and... Um, Stay with them for oh, a so bit. you had some friends there that kind of like gave you like or helped you like settle you in. Yeah, I was on the couch. I was on the couch. Kind of you the ropes. Yeah, I was on the couch for about. Yeah, it definitely showed me the ropes and showed me around. My first day in New York was mm. was amazing, and then um, then I started going. To, I went to Borough Manhattan Community College, and um, I was actually uh, trying out for the basketball team at, at the college. How did that go? Well, because I was shooting hoops uh-huh. and. Uh, one of the guys on the side was like, "Sign him up, coach. Sign him up." So the next, so you seat, were, you were ran that mid that mid range. Right? Oh, that's all I can maybe do. I mean, I can't <laughs> dribble the ball to save my life. <laughs> but anyway, if somehow they said, "Yeah, come on out." The coach was like, "Come out." So I went out. And I was I was running, but those kids were so fast, and I was so slow. But you had that that mid your mid range game is butter. Yeah, though. but they iced me out. They wouldn't throw me the ball. They pass you the ball. Yo, so when you know when we're scrimmaging. <laughs> You know, they not pass me the ball. It's like they got together and don't throw the Asian guy the ball. Yeah. So I didn't even get any I've looks. I've been there, done that. Bro, yeah. definitely been there. It's crazy when you're hooping. They, 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 they'll they see us walk in and they'll be like, Asian guys don't play ball. Yeah, and they're definitely not trying they're to not, waste a possession by passing us the ball. Especially back then. Like, they're definitely not trying to pass you the ball. Yeah. Right? Until you do something, and they're like, okay, now we can pass the ball. But those guys probably were like, man, this fool might take our scholarship. <laughs> they're probably like, man, fuck this well, dude. They're giving the ball. Yeah, well, I mean, those, those kids, like... Now that's a pretty good college to play basketball at. Yeah. Like there, I think they're even like the, the, that time they were Division three, but I think they moved up in a bit. Mm-hmm. So it was it was a good time for me to try to get on the squad because there weren't really that great players there. Yeah. Um, but then I went to school there, and then at that same time I was um, I was um, I auditioned for a movie, and that changed my life. I was working at this place called Indochine, and that Indochine was like a place where. It, like I was able to like really network there and I met uh-huh. a lot of really, really good people. And then I didn't show up to tryouts. So I don't even know. I don't think I would have made the team, but I ended up doing that movie. And that's called The Cut Runs Deep. And that was uh, by a that's, that's famous director started, here. Right? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's interesting being in kind of like a mix. And I, I think there's that mix too in Seoul. Like all the people that are in our network are kind of doing kind of interesting stuff. Mm-hmm. And it seems like in New York... You know, for my friends, when I went to visit New York, I mean, you, I didn't even know I'd run into you, but of course you, modeling, acting. Uh, at that time, I think you were going to do photography. I for- was tr- I was in a time where I was not working at uh-huh. all. Uh-huh. And like, I'm getting pressure from people like, oh, you know, are you going to continue to do this? Uh, you mm-hmm. know, and I'm like, well, 
You know, at that time, I think I was barely 40 or whatever. And mm -hmm. I was like, I'm just giving a couple more years. And But then at the same time, I really like to shoot. And, right. you know, I love photography. Right. So I was trying to do that on the side. Right. And then, um, yeah. So that's what I You know what's funny? Like, I think we, we've run into you in, like, like a lot of random places. Like, you ran into him in New York. We ran into you in L.A. that, uh, well, actually, I think that's the first time I actually met you. Yeah, that, that the, was uh, when, at the at the Asian Film Awards. That was an awesome night. So great. That was a You guys were looking night. sharp in your suits? Oh. You guys, we, we, specials. Yo, yo, <laughs> we had the baggy 90s suits on. Oh, yeah. But we felt so I thought so Michael fly. Jordan walked in. Oh, my God. <laughs> Bro, bro we, we felt so fly though. Like I felt fly though. We went to Itaewon. <laughs> we went to Itaewon. We got like our like you know just the newest like freshest thing that we saw. Like oh, you guys are dapper down. You know. Yeah. We had the <laughs> man. It was crazy. We had the what well, we rent the charger. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we, we felt. Well, we had, wait, what happened to Dave that night? Because we all went out because we were with Q and I met you through Q. Actually, mm -hmm. the first time I met you was down here in Jamshid at my buddy Jason's house. I think the season was over and we were all having a beer. And then you and Q showed up. You were in here shooting, I think, Iris at the time. Oh, yeah. And I think that's the first time we just My hair briefly, is as yellow as your hat right now. Yeah. I think that's <laughs> the first time we briefly, like, kind of hung oh, out. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. But you guys are awesome. Really, really good friends. I appreciate that. No, yeah. man, we've been, uh, we've been, yeah, it was, it was a really, like, cool thing to meet other, like, half Koreans that were doing something, like, interesting. Because, you know, when we grew up, like, we didn't really know a lot of other half Koreans. Then yeah. coming out to, out to Korea, we met a lot more. But, you know, like they were, everyone was seemed to be doing something interesting. So it's like, okay, well, how'd you grow up? What'd you do? What are you doing now? And then meeting you and like seeing what you've done and your journey and, and now that you're here. And then, you know, we actually like lived together in the same building last year. It was like, it was like super awesome just to. Oh, it was just to. Hell yeah. Yeah. I feel uh, like it was back in the back in like a like a frat house, man. It was awesome. You got some salt. <laughs> you got some rice. It was, it was dope. Yo, you got olive oil. Uh, can you take dope. Duchess out? It was dope, man. It was yeah, dope. yeah, you know, it really was. It was awesome. I miss you having the, having you there. Yeah, but definitely. I think that. Uh, but you guys definitely were very, very huge supporters. I just saw that scar on your knee. That's yeah. crazy ass operation. The original there. knee yeah, scar, man. Yeah. Wow. They used to do surgeries like that like a hundred years ago. That's insane. <laughs> Anyway, um, uh, but you guys were, I was doing Iris right. and I was going to go back to America and you're like, Dave, what are you doing? Why are you going back? You should stay here. I know that's that we, we were saying that for a long time, but I understand because yeah. there's a huge draw because you had like this dope community in LA. I mean, we stayed at your house. Yeah. That one time. Yeah. I had a great time. Yeah. Um, um that we we went to One Oak that night. And went out. Anyways, oh, yeah. anyways, it was it was, yeah. it, was it was it was a great night yeah. with right. the boys. Um, but yeah, I mean, you seemed like you had like a pretty dope, exciting yeah. kind well, of. I got some great friends over there in LA and, uh, that I met. In half of them came from New York, uh -huh. that I met in the early two thousands, late oh, late nineties actually, and then the other half I met in LA. Great, great group of guys, man. I mean, you've always, like, if, from your community, like, one of the things that I'm most thankful for is, like, from your community, you've hooked us up. Like, you've plugged us into people in Bali and in, in L.A. I mean, anywhere we go. Oh, Bali, Nadia, so, Nadia. I mean, bro, Nadia. like, yeah, it's like, it, it's, yeah, it's been dope, man. Okay, we, we have to we have to get a Navia story from back in the day because I only know Navia from now. Mm. But before we do this, there's something we do every, and we're past our mark, e. Right, right, right. Should, so, I, dive, should e, I dive in? Yeah, we should, should I dive in? E, you, so we're gonna do the uh, the speed round. The speed round with you. It's something Before. we do, right? Okay. So Dave, here on. I'm gonna give you ten choices, ten quick questions. I'm gonna give them to you, and then you just gotta pick one. Okay. okay. It's speed. You can't. There's no time to think here. This is more for our listeners in Wisconsin. Yeah. To see the cheeseheads, you know, the homegrown, the homegrown uh, don't Wisconsin, you know? Wisconsin. Don't, Wisconsin. Don't you know? Don't you know? <laughs> All right. You ready? Mm -hmm. Ford or Chevy? Chevy. Easy one. All day. Patty cake. German Shepherd or Siri? Ger German Shepherd. Okay. Pancakes or waffles? Waffles. Oh. Jordans or Chuck Taylors? Chuck Taylors. Wow. Didn't expect that one. Interesting. Well, it's the thing now, but you tell me, ask me that next month. I might okay. go Jordans. To go or dine at home? Uh, dine at home. Sriracha or Tabasco? Oh, Tabasco all day. Wisconsin or Hawaii? Hawaii. Mm. Uh, let me see what we Sorry. got. Sorry. <laughs> Picnic in the park or drive-in movie? Picnic in the park or a drive-in movie? Drive-in movie. No picnics. Like I'm not cleaning all that shit up. <laughs> drive-in movie. Movie or book? 
uh, movie? Superman or Batman? Well, that's an audio book. <laughs> James just not trying to read. I'm not trying to, <laughs> not read. to read. No. Superman or Batman? Superman or Batman? Batman. Kissing or holding hands? Oh. Is there a third option? <laughs> as usual, all of, as all of, all of the above. <laughs> all of the above. Baguette or sliced bread? Uh, toasted baguette. Mm. Toasted baguette. Mm. And for the last and final question, take your time on this one. Milwaukee Bucks or the Green Bay Packers? Oh. Packers. Packers. For sure, Packers, Packers. I mean, you got to go with the winning. Mm. Packers win. There you go. Lombardi. Like, but you know, being a huge basketball head when I was a kid, I would watch the Milwaukee Bucks religiously. Terry Cummings. Like, oh, okay. Like, you know what I mean? Jack like, Sigma. Uh, you went Ricky the, Pierce. You went through all the years mm. when they weren't good. Yeah, and I would Ray Allen. pray for them. I Ray thought Ray Allen, Allen might have turned it around because when he was like young and like just a stud yeah. and he had Ben Baker. Yeah. We all had Jack Sigma, Sidney Moncrief. Big dog. Yeah, big, big dog. Later. We had Randy Brewer. <laughs> Remember mm. Randy Brewer? I don't remember oh Randy Brewer. God. Look, guys, look up Randy Brewer. He had his uh, footer with a little hook shot. Did you, you, did you even it. play football? I played, you know, that's funny. Because we I, never even played football. I, but we I tried, loved football. Freshman year, I tried out for the football team. Uh huh. <laughs> in Hawaii or in, in Milwaukee? No, or, in, in, in Anigo. And my town is a, it's a, it's a potato, found, uh, potato uh, town. And, Mainly, and um, they they're like big guys, and we were a Division One for being such a small mm -hmm. uh, town. Oh, wow. And so I played. I went out there and put on the pads, and um, I tried to put on the pads. And I went out there and I, I hit this guy really hard. Well, the first thing is my pants wouldn't even fit me. I got done, I was so skinny that they the pants <laughs> wouldn't even fit me. It just kept on falling down. And I hit this guy really hard, and I ended up hurting my back. And I said, "This is no football's not for me." So football yeah. wasn't really for I, me. Well, I wanted to play football because uh, for my age, I was big, Huge, like yeah. when I was like in second yeah. grade. But then, you know, there's those kids that started shaving in like fifth grade. Uh, so yeah, yeah. like these guys are putting on muscle and I'm still, I was big for second grade, but as I got older, I just stretched out and got skinnier and skinnier. And some people just got compact. Yeah, but all, the whole time, like you always wanted to play football. Oh, I, 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 love, I, never that. Really, I love that. I never just, really had any desire. Rah. But like he really wanted, I mean, even when he played basketball, he was more physical, right? Yeah, yeah so I football, see that. I played football on a basketball court. Yeah. So like, I remember like the coaches were always like, yeah, what do you think? You know, play football, you'd be a great tight end. You're huge, look at your size. You know, football is perfect for you. And yeah. My, and my dad was like, no, no, that didn't happen. By high school, I saw dad how big those no. kids were and, and I, I knew I had the aggression and maybe the speed, but it, one hit would have just torn me up. This is, what, this is what our dad said. Our dad said this. He, he said, okay, if you want to play football, you can play, what, your senior year of high school? Yeah. He was like, you can play then if you want to play. But by then, it's like all these guys are already lifting weights, getting huge, playing football, they know the plays. And by that time, like, my dad was pretty smart when he did this because, like, by that time, if you're not playing, you're not going to just start. Oh, yeah, you just can't walk on there. But yeah. I mean, it sounds like your dad had the big hand in, like, your career is that to move forward that could give you some good advice. Well, he got he got yeah. injured pretty badly he got rocked, when he was in high school, and he still has, like a like, a kind of a janky knee from that so he was worried that you know we would have like that kind of injury and ruin our basketball well, it's funny i just watched the aaron hernandez documentary oh my god dude easy, right? and he oh my god got concussions in high school right remember that part yeah, yeah. so he might have had what's that called C ct uh what is it i know you, what you're talking about the like the, the minor brain? the minor minor concussions that, mm, that build, up. Up. build up build a hole in the center of your right. in your brain so you can't make your your cognitive senses good yeah they say um, like i mean obviously like you know thanks dad for steering us away from football because like now they're doing all the research on the concussions there's all these documentaries coming out like the Aaron hernandez thing and like uh, like what was it like junior sale like there's been like a, a whole bunch of guys that have like, gone down that road <clears> with undiagnosed concussion related yeah. stuff so i mean it probably it was good that you didn't play football and that we didn't play football <laughs> Yeah. For our mental health. Yeah. No, yeah, I don't know what happened now, though. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, okay. So, we, we did a little bit about New York. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about LA now for a little bit. So, so you're in New York mostly like what, 20s? No, I'm only and, 20s. And then LA is more like your 30s. Yeah, exactly. Is, is that what we're doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, let's talk about dating. Um, dating. So, because okay. I know New York is just a different culture, man. Like, and when I go to LA, you don't have a girlfriend in New York. And it's, go deep, go deep. Yeah, Let's yeah, do a yeah, deep yeah. dive on this. Why don't you have a girlfriend? It's just very really hard York. to like, you know, 
just get a girlfriend in New York. You don't. Just really, you're always walking shaking, down the moving, street, walking, just, just walking. I mean, you just walk and keep it moving. Like even the handshake in New York is like a walk and keep it moving. It's like it's like it's like. Uh huh. Cool. And I think it's like the East Coast is just it is like that. And the West Coast, we're just like, hey man, what are you doing? You want to get get it's a slower. beer? It's like slower, it's just slower. Chiller. I wanted that because it was a little too fast for me at that time, and I think I felt like going back to LA and I what think, the dating life was. Oh, we're talking about dating. I'm trying to get off the dating. <laughs> no, okay. I got a girlfriend right away. Like, like oh, okay, I, okay. I really like, when you went to LA. Yeah, it's more of like a you get you get into a relationship with friend, at least me when I was in LA. It's a really more of a relationship friendly place you know, so, so basically if we put it in a nutshell we're saying it's better to have a relationship more on the west coast la and then in new york it's kind of a better place to be single i would say if you had to generalize i would say i say that uh is there a bad place easier. to be single <laughs> <laughs> you could there's like a lot of things you can do over there mm-hmm. like just taking a drive to the beach is a lot more than you can do in new york and just, you spend a lot of good quality time yeah and uh yeah, so I think uh, so, it's a little easier to be in a relationship. In so, what's your favorite memory from? Because you spent like a lot of time in Europe when you were young, when you were in your twenties, right? And then you kind of went back and forth a lot, right? So, uh, like, yeah. if you think if you think about New York, like, what's your what's your favorite memory? Like, what, like when you think about New York, like, what do you think? You're like, I remember this. Like, maybe it's this restaurant, maybe it's this date, maybe it's this whatever. Like, what? okay, well, I mean, Indochine working at that mm. restaurant changed my life. Um, Grace Papaya's hot dogs because really. Like, I survived on that. Okay, because I think those are trash. I mean, I, I don't want to yeah. like do it because I know that's an institution. So I was excited to try them, <laughs> and then I was like, "This is trash. Why is it on like well, because Seinfeld?" Because it was a dollar fifty for for two hot dogs and a drink, and when you're broke, <laughs> I, I mean, I didn't have any money. Like, I mean, I thought it was, was like crazy. some hipster like nice. Yeah, that's what we thought. Yeah. No, you ate there because it was cheap. <laughs> okay. And that, either that, or you stepped up. You stepped up to a New York uh, slice of pizza, uh-huh. which was like two fifty or something like that. You'd step up, but mainly those like Grace Papaya. I lived up Upper West Side for a bit, and I get Grace Papayas right there, and then go down, go downtown. Mm-hmm. So if you have a little more money, you get a slice. Like how much does a slice cost then? I, I think it's like a couple bucks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so like like New York's famous for pizza too, right? Everyone's like, oh, New York pizza is like this and that. Like, can you get that kind of a pizza? Like when you moved to LA, could you get a good slice of pizza out there? And can you get a good slice of pizza here? Uh, maybe now you can, but back then, no, back in the, uh, back in the early two thousands, I think. Yeah. Can you get really? a good pizza here? Yeah. I mean, I just got a good pizza in Itaewon. Favorite place to get pizza mm. in Korea. Uh, I think it's called Tra- Travoli or Travoli. It's right next to the Daiso in Itaewon, right next to. Oh, okay. Uh, I know exactly what you're talking about. Right. Oh, you, you do. Yeah. Right I know where Vatos. the Daiso is. Right yeah, yeah, underneath yeah. Vatos. That place is bomb. I've it's, never been there. Is this place have, good? For 7,000 won, you okay. can get like. Like the best for me, prosciutto and a little bit of arugula, or you can get like yeah. a buffalo mozzarella. So we're doing like more not American pizza. We're doing more like real Italian style. Yeah, and they they sell it like gotcha. one piece, like Sicilian squares. Okay, they sell it there, but thin crust. It's a shit. Damn, I have to check it out. I've seen that place. Yeah, we could like, go there today. Yeah, I'm, I'm not s- eating bread these days. Damn. Okay, well yeah. we'll go there. Yeah, we'll go there. Check <laughs> we'll go check yeah. it out. <laughs> Hmm. Well, shoot, man. Like, like also like, I mean, you kind of touched on that a little bit, like as far as like health and everything goes, like I know yeah, that you're, yeah. really, you're really into that stuff. And we kind of like have touched on this on a couple of other podcasts before, just like health, beauty, diet and everything like that. And like, now, you know, we're all getting a little older. Like, are there certain things that you're doing? Cause you fucking look great. Like, is there, is there anything that you're doing like just diet wise that you're like, well, I noticed as the older I got, um, the more sensitive my body got mm. to yeah. what? To so foods. You, to like bread. Like, drinks, is that why you're not drinks, doing bread? foods and breads and you know, I was just inflamed all the time. Mm-hmm. And then I, you know, this whole gluten-free thing, and some people think it's it's, it's a really a thing for me. My body just kind of changed after a while. And then you don't really know notice it until you do a 21-day, like, take off all that, get off all that stuff. I think once you do that, there's no coming back. Because once I kind of did a time with no alcohol, and I was fine. I didn't notice anything perceptibly. But once I did, like, my drought, and then I came back after a month and, and started having a drink here and there. Then I really noticed how bad it just kicked right. my ass. Right. And like I, me and Eric went vegan for what, like six months? Right. And then when I came back, just all the bad, like, you know, like hamburgers and stuff, it really right. just fucks me up. It weighs on you. Yeah. It weighs on you. You just feel it differently. <laughs> yeah. So, so then how about this? Then? Okay. Obviously, like everyone knows that, like, you know, like you have to figure out a diet that's good for you and all this kind of stuff. What's the hardest thing when when you know these things aren't good for you, right? What's the hardest thing for you to give up? 
Like, um, is it like... Uh, me, M&M's. M&M's? Oh, Sweets. That's my, that's my shit. No, m M&M, and M&M's. M&M's. For, for, and specifically oh, M&M's. peanut M&M's. Oh, peanut God. M&M's and ice cream. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? They have. Do you know they have Ben and Jerry? They sell Ben and Jerry's now at the convenience oh. stores. We have been going ham in our neighborhood. But it's like, it's always sold out. So there'll be like one random flavor, like... It, it'll be Cherry Garcia one day or it'll be Cookie Dough one day. See, that's the, that's the problem. It's like when you're trying to be healthy, there's that one oh thing. God. It's like somehow the world knows. They're like, killing us. Like, I'm, on, I'm, on a good, I'm on a good thing right now. But if I saw Ben & Jerry's, which I know I can't get, I'm yeah. good, right? Then all of a sudden you go and you're like, fuck, Ben & Jerry's here now. My dad's ruined. What are you going to do? Like, what are you going to do? I, it's, it's hard because like, you know that like, I mean, for so long, like there's all these good foods, good drinks, all this stuff out there that we like. But we know, as, as, as you've been saying, because I felt it too, and my body gets more sensitive, so if I if I drink this, eat this, whatever, I can feel it almost immediately. But still, it's like, fuck, like it just. Yeah, I know. Of, even the lactose, you know? you're like, no, it's okay. It won't happen this time. I won't get lactose. <laughs> right, right. I, mean, I just have a couple of scoops of ice cream. It's bro, fine. bro, it's fine. I grew up cereal every morning. <laughs> yeah. I had cereal every morning with milk, right. whole milk, right. mm-hmm. and now lactose fucks me up because they don't make it the same anymore. Do you think that's what it is, or do you think we're getting older, getting more sensitive? I think that too. So it's like a combination of factors. I think so. Yeah. I remember when we were younger, like my mom would always buy like 2%, 1%. My dad was like, nah, we need the whole milk. milk. Like, like, There's nothing milk. like, if you're going to do it, just fucking do <laughs> the, it. The worst, no. the worst was when my mom made a mistake and bring home skim milk. My, oh, dad, my, my, dad, my dad's face was it's like, like white water. It was like, like, just you could see him. I was like, we need to get some milk for dad. <laughs> but you know, the milk game has really gotten better though. Like I think now you can get oat milk, oat milk, milk. Oat milk yeah. in in uh, Korea now. Almond milk's always yeah. a standard. So. What was that milk that we when we were trying all the? I think we were trying to go vegan for a little bit. There was one milk that was absolutely delicious. Oat milk is the king of milks. Is it the oat milk? And it's actually the king of like environmentally conscious stuff too. Hmm. So like what? it uses the less water than hmm. almond milk, and uh, it's good right? for the environment. And it tastes it tastes amazing. But I, then growing up in Wisconsin, when when the dairy is so strong, like I mean, what, could they make oat cheese? Would it taste the same? Um, I, I don't know. They can do anything now. Like, yeah, honestly, they oh, can do geez. anything now. I would put it past. Huh. Yeah. So. <laughs> I want to make oatmeal oat cookies. But, yeah, I want to get the, I want to do that next. Oh, if 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 you want to do that, you got to get a recipe from my wife. Dude, my wife is. makes oatmeal cookies. To is that right? But She's she, killing the so game. you can't get molasses. It's hard to find molasses, but you need molasses for it. But, you know. Honey? Gloom? It's not going to be the same. Uh, Molasses is just different, bro. Um, I wouldn't be surprised, though, because, like, you're a really good chef. I don't know if, like, a I'm lot of people okay. know, too. Like, you you, you throw down in the kitchen. Like, I remember right coming upstairs, and I was like, Dave, what you doing? You, you're making oh, you throw, I saw, down. you throw down. I saw something no, lingering no. in the crock pot today when we went to pick you, you up. What, what's going on in there, He's bro? He's a crock pot master. It's what you got left. Uh, what, you, what you got left. So, it's you know, I like just whatever I got left over, I'd throw in the crock pot. So, I had some potatoes and carrots and just happened. And some steak. You know what? I used to get, like... Like, you know, the, the beef chuck, like the big things of steak. Uh-huh. But I was like, man, I just got some leftover steak, ribeye. Throw it oh, in. That's like actually even better. Yeah. I threw it See, in it was, there. Because, like, living on the second floor, you lived on the third floor. So, like, I could never really smell what was going on in your apartment. But as soon as I walked up the stairs, I was like, what is Dave oh, doing? And I was like, I got to get in there. Dave, especially, the especially chilies are the God, best. No, the chilies are the best. Because no. he was on a crock pot kick. Like, it was like a couple months straight yeah. that your crock pot was just, like, full of something delicious. Like, whatever was uh, in there, you were making, like, roasts and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, but, but you just made some uh, salmon. Uh, not uh, you fried the potatoes up, and you in the in the salmon. You got grease? skills, man. You <laughs> got skills. Grease? You have. I haven't had your. Cooking I, I've yet. been chilling. I've been in hiatus because my wife is just yeah. taking over the game. Oh, okay. His wife at home, down. she's she's finding cilantro and making yeah. her own tortillas and stuff. And I'm just like, I thought I was okay, like as far as cooking. Like we we managed. Yeah, Me and Eric we, used to cook all the time together when we lived together. And now I just feel like a chimp. Playing with a stick in the dirt, it, it, <laughs> like, and she's it, just like. Wait, do you do the dishes? It's, uh, yeah, uh, it's next level shit, yo. Her, her like, Sunny, yeah, love you, she like, great. You're, you're great. wow. Yeah, you know, I see some it. stuff on the on the gram. She's like, yeah. they're killing it, and they're all healthy yeah. options, right? Yeah. Most of them That's are awesome. like are like vegetarian options, oh. bro. Like like recently, she was it in Frioladas. Oh my god, I had it last night, it's bro. Like, Really, Dave? We're gonna have I you over. The invite? We're I gonna know. have you over. So we're gonna. You never we're, invite me, man. So we're gonna do a Thanksgiving dinner. Or you don't pick up the phone. You don't pick up the call. Like last time, I was down over that neighborhood. I do. You, you hit me up. I was like, bam! I'm back in the neighborhood, bro. Oh. I'm juggling babies. Like literally. Uh, like understood. You know. I got you. 
and yeah. literally juggling the babies just no, for like, fun. It's my hobby. <laughs> also, a lot of people may not know that Thanksgiving Beautiful is babies. your favorite holiday. That's my all time. Right? Is it? So we yeah more than Christmas. Yeah, bro. Thanksgiving. So like we 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 found a really great place in the neighborhood. That did Thanksgiving a couple of years ago, and we came uh, down. They, and they threw got, down the they, people over in, uh, in Zhengzhou, the New Orleans guys. It was great. They're but. good, you know. And it, it's always just like there's there's a ton of restaurants that do a good job. They used to do it on base, and it's good. But mm. you know, you can never do it better than like a potluck amongst friends. Like yeah. it's just it's yeah. not going to do good be, because at the restaurant they got so many things, right. so many things, and usually the kitchen space is limited in Korea. So the best is when you divide up the responsibilities and like you do mac and cheese, uh, we'll do mashed yeah. potatoes, you do obviously. I mean, you can't you can't be pumpkin home cooked, pie. but it, it's tough. Like especially when you're living overseas to find a good like Thanksgiving dinner. I remember one one year we were in Chunju and we were just on like oh. googling, like just looking for something that resembled Thanksgiving dinner. What's the favorite on the uh, Thanksgiving dinner? Hmm. What is the piece that you have to eat? I'm I'm just gonna throw it back to um, you eat stuffing fruit. and gravy. That's like my favorite thing ever. But the stuffing, it can't be just squishy stuff. It's got to have something like celery to give it a little like crunch, crunch. or a little little bit oven ro- little, like crusty. On the outside. That's what I mean. Yeah, a little crust. It can't just be mush. The mush, yeah. you know, that's that's the wow. that's the staple. But you need a little bit of crunch inside that stuffing. What about yours? Favorite Thanksgiving? Oh, stuffing. Stuffing. Stuffing, and then I put some. Uh, some cranberry, uh, what do you call that? Cranberry sauce. Uh, not, yeah, put a cranberry sauce on there. Shit. So we should do, we talked about this, we should do Thanksgiving dinner. I to, I'm saying, we're, right? this is happening. Oh, happening. Oh, so we're we're having it at my house. Yeah. Oh, I wasn't listening, I guess. <laughs> That's what, my dad told me that since I was born, you don't listen. Hey, hey, turn them up. Turn them up. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, her, like I'm, I'm excited because like, I love stuffing too. But honestly, if I'm oh, thinking of Thanksgiving, no, is, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking of pumpkin pie. Pumpkin well, pie? So, so oh, like we, we're we prepared yeah. for pumpkin, I'll think of pumpkin pie. pie. But so I, we did all this stuff. We ordered all this stuff for pumpkin pie. And then, spoiler, somebody came over and was like, you know they got those at Costco now. Costco, I guess, has these amazing, you know, Costco does everything huge. Pumpkin huge pie. pumpkin pies that I guess are pretty good. Well, let's go on. Thanks, yeah, we don't want to make pumpkin pie, do we? Well, homemade oh, you, pumpkin pie is better. It's pretty good. But... It's, you made you made it before. Oh, we've done it. We've ah. we've actually we've roasted the pumpkin, did you pureed see? the pumpkin, oh. and uh. drained out the juice. Uh. Did it all from get scratch. The get the here. spices. We've done it, and it, there's nothing like it. Right. It's just a shit ton of work. It's like Livy Livy makes that little can with the pumpkin puree that tastes uh. like pumpkin pie. Oh. Like you can get a pumpkin, roast it, put the spices, blend it up, do all this kind of stuff, and it, it doesn't taste better than the can. But you know, you know what's in that can. So in conspiracy theory. I haven't checked it, but some of my it's friends really not pumpkins. It was like. Well, t- okay, that could be another one. But he was like, you know, it's just all sugar they put in that can, is what he told Probably. me. Probably. Yeah. It tastes awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so, but it tastes awesome, right? Yeah. So what are we going to do? Who's making what now? Okay, we're going to get to that in a uh, second, but mm. we're hitting our we're hitting our time. You want to give him the, the final countdown of it's, our most amazing questions ever? Well, it's time for Dave's <laughs> pop quiz. We do mm. this. We're supposed to do it at the 45-minute mark, but we kind of right. got sidetracked, which, <laughs> which we're known to do. Um <laughs> So, Dave, are you ready? This is awesome. So, Dave. <laughs> you guys are kicking ass over here. It's Dave, great. This isn't the speed round, so you can actually mm. take your time in these right. questions. Because these are, these are going to be a little harder than Ford versus Chevy. Whoa. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> what, what, was that, what, what, what you saying, bro? That was too much of a softball, bro. He's got a Chevy. He's got two. Have you never had you a You got Ford? the Corvette and the... Laser. You know what I heard? Because yours is OJ era, kind of. They said one of the reasons they discontinued the Bronco, which actually I love. And it's they're similar, Blazer versus Bronco. Yeah. Bring them uh, back. They said it was a lot of it was because of OJ. And that the Bronco back. terrible. Yeah, it was bad publicity. That's actually the worst thing of the whole deal. No, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Dave, first question, and I'm gonna lob you kind of a it's thought provoking, but it's kind of a softball. Okay. Uh if you had to delete every app off your phone and all your mm. tablets and everything, but you could save four, what Ooh. four are you going with? Okay, well, you're male. Yeah. Okay, so you're going Gmail. Oh wait, I could still use my computer, right? My bad. Like you could use a browser. So I'm on an get... island. I'm on an island, but nothing else. No, that, the island's another question. That's oh, a question okay. we always do. Okay, well, this is just your like phone. Questions. You're still living in Seoul. <laughs> Stop. Just just answer the question, man. Stop trying to wiggle out. Uh, so s- same life, nothing mm-hmm. special. It's just you got to delete everything off your phone except for four apps. Which ones are you going to do the extra work to, to to open up your browser and go onto Instagram? And which ones do you absolutely need the the convenience of the app? Okay, the navigation. Tinder. 
Okay. Navigation. So first, first is navigation. Uh, first navigation. Mm. Um, because we ain't getting anywhere without Google that. Maps. Got you. Not getting anywhere. Um, my Papa Go. Papa Go. My 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 tra- I need my translations. Okay, translations. And my important. learning. Yeah. Okay. okay. That's actually really important. Yeah. yeah. Ding ding. Ding ding. Um. <laughs> what else? There's there's a. Okay. I got two more. Hmm. Well. It's fantasy football season right now, so I'm going to throw my fantasy football app in there. Wow, as one of your survival, <laughs> can't live without, okay. Oh, hell yeah, cool. Sunday football. Got it. So you've actually wasted one of your choices with fantasy football. Go ahead. Wasted? Next one, next That's one. harsh. Next That's one, so next harsh. One. Just because you don't play. Yeah. Yeah, you, know, you know what it is? The chair's going to his head, man. The chair, the chair's <laughs> like going to his head, Like not cacao talk? The like, chair is going to your head <laughs> you right now. Do it. <laughs> we need, we need the to power. Overthrow. Respect the chair. <laughs> Respect the chair. See, there, respect you, the there you go. <laughs> <laughs> They're all chairs. <laughs> okay. So you 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 didn't say cacao talk. You said uh, you said you go in fantasy football. You have one more left. They can text me some okay. message. Okay. Okay. Mm. okay. So last one. You have one more app. For I do. Uh huh. Oh. Um. Ding 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 ding. It's not a speed round, but we should have a timer. <laughs> <laughs> what would be your four? No, this is for Dave. Oh, this is for Dave. This is for Dave. Yeah. Mail. Mail? So mail. You're going with email. Yeah, I got to work. I got to work. Wait, too. that wasn't his first one? Wasn't that your first nope. one? No. Nope. Oh, the first one was navigation. Right. So okay. navigation, mail, fantasy football app. Papago. And Papago. Okay. okay. Boom. Cool. Moving on to oh, our- but if I But if I'm working, if I'm working, I would uh, take that that uh, that um, fantasy football app and I would do the dictionary app. Nice. Because I use a thesaurus. But like, you know what? All the time. It's too late. You just got a job and you've decided with fantasy football. And so you're going to be on set okay. with fantasy football and people are going to be like, what's this word? I... Okay. I would have won with the flashlight. Ooh, flashlight. But that's more of a widget. Okay. We'll talk about that next widget time. Widget versus apps? Okay. Two part question. Alarm clock. Damn. If Corona lasts for two more years, calendar. So, like, if it lasts longer and we're kind of in the current situation for a while, where do you want to hunker down? Because, you know, you, you're kind of global. You, you got New York, you got LA, you got the countryside, Montana, you got Hawaii, you got Seoul. Where are you going to hunker down if it lasts, you know, indefinitely like two years? Hmm. I'd either, I'd either go see one of my parents. But you got to stay there for the whole two years. You got to hunker down. I got to hunker down for two years. Because if, until the Hawaii, vaccine or Hawaii, whatever. Hawaii. So you're going to Hawaii. Yeah. Okay. So, and then the second one is, okay, so you're hunkered Actually, down. Actually, time out. Man, stay you're in just, Seoul. I just, just stay in Seoul. You, just stay in Seoul? Yeah, Seoul is like amazing right now. Because you well, can do I, everything. I could do anything. Yeah. Wait, I mean, where, where would I go? There like, you, go. The, the, you know, there's a lot of rules in Hawaii right now. You know, because your yeah. wife's from Hawaii. And like, they can't even They're go do there. nothing. Right? Yeah. No, I'd stay here. Stay in, I'd stay in Seoul, Korea. Mm. Okay. And one place, if, if during those two years... You know, because it's it's a it's a bitch now to travel. You got to do the lines. You got to do the temperature checks. You got to do the testing. You got to do the quarantine. You got to do all this kind of stuff. Yeah. If there was one one during that two year period, you're just like, fuck, I gotta get out of here. I gotta go do something. Where's the one place that you would want to go that's actually worth the freaking pain of the two week quarantine? Hawaii, you got a two week quarantine. Yeah. You know all the pain that comes in with travel. So where would you go? Where's the one place you would go? Um, that's worth the bs and then how long would i stay there as much as you want as much. two years <laughs> <laughs> oh you mean just like I just, you know, like you oh. got to get away from seoul for like a month a couple weeks whatever you got to do uh okay 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 i would go to um yeah we go to hawaii hawaii yeah and that's a tough one because i think for instance for us going back to seattle you don't have to quarantine but I'd, hawaii you have to quarantine yeah, i'd go to bali place. Fuck, fuck everything. I go to Bali. Go to Bali. Bali, <laughs> Bali. If I if I gotta deal with quarantine, at least I'm being Bali. Because in Bali you get that villa. There you go. There you go. And there you okay. Go. I'm going to Bali. Ah, uh, okay, I'm going okay. To Bali. Well, you guys are already prepare for this. These yeah. questions. I'm just thinking. I already have it on answers. <laughs> okay. That's cool. So now this Bali. is a this, Bali. I want to go to Bali. Dave, it's <laughs> Bali, bro. You just don't know. If you know, you know. If you do, I missed my chance to go to Bali. Oh, it's Okay, so this is one we always ask is the desert island, uh-huh. and you get three items to take to this deserted island. Three mm-hmm. items. Okay. And don't knife. say fantasy football. A knife. Okay, a knife. Um, oh, we're going straight survival. Are you talking about like a butter knife like, or like a... 
like no, like one of the knives. Like I get okay. It's actually, like the it's Rambo. Like the Rambo. It's actually knife. a knife with the the butt end. Of it is actually a, a fire starter. Mm. That's okay, number one. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Um, Survival number, knife. Yeah. Number two, probably like some like fishing line. Uh-huh. Fishing line. Need and it. Then, that, yeah. And uh, number three, big fisherman hat. No, I'm just kidding. Just a hat. I'm just kidding. You couldn't I'm make kidding. that out of I'm banana kidding. leaves I don't with even your wear, knife. I don't even wear them things. Okay. Uh, I'm taking sunscreen. Sunscreen? <laughs> oh no! Uh, um, I'm not gonna waste an item on sunscreen. What, 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 what did Tony say? Tony said he's bringing hose. He's bringing hose. Yeah. Tony's bringing hose. <laughs> Tony's bringing hose. <laughs> what kind of hose? He said he's like he's like hose. If I'm hose? stuck on an island, yeah. I'm bringing hose. Hose? <laughs> That's what Tony. Said. Okay, but you, you, we don't give him any ideas. Sorry, sorry, sorry. This is Dave's. Right. You got no. one more item. You got one more item to bring. I'm you got so a up. knife. You got hose. What was it? Was oh, no, fishing line. He said fishing line. So and boring. Knife. I'm so boring. <laughs> I'm bringing third, hose. Third I'm item, bro. The party. Third item. Yeah, uh, third item would be uh, um, a boat. A boat. <laughs> boat to get off the <laughs> island. <Okay. laughs> That's actually the best. All right, item. I'll allow it. That's usually not allowed. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so. Next question well, fuck your is, questions. Fuck your question. I'm making my, question. my own <laughs> questions. All right. Uh, thank you for respecting the preparation I've done with all these questions. Helicopter. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> this is helicopter right on. This is like okay, 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 okay. Okay, guys. Can I please have the room? Can I have the floor? You're in the I, king I need chair. a You're gavel, bro. Chair, I need a gavel or a blowhorn. See what's going to his head now? He needs a gavel. Hey. He's only got the chair. Gavel. Order. Uh, okay. So. If you could pick one period in your life, your 20s, your 30s, or your 40s, for nothing else, not for wisdom, not for work, not for anything. If you're picking it strictly for dating, pick one of those periods, 20s, 30s, or 40s, and explain why you would pick that period. Mid-30s, in my prime. So you're taking 30s. And when you say in your prime, like... Your your reason is because you're in your prime, and what do you mean, physically, mentally, you know, like, well, actually, financially, it's about, it's about thirty-seven, thirty-eight. Financially, no, that was not a good time for me, but 37, <laughs> 37 38 is a, is a good time. I think that you're figuring out yourself, or I, at least I was, and um, you, be, you know, I was becoming more of a man, and 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 uh, I was, uh, yeah, is, I think but, I was a better catch at thirty-seven than you are now. Oh no, I'm a great catch now. So why why did you say 30s though? You didn't say 40s. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a good. Well, you know, it's always great to be 37 though. 36. Yeah, 37 is great. Is great. I wish you know go mean? back, man. See, I think I'm great now, but I think my wife like she wishes I would go back to how I was when I met her. But has your is wife right? seen you in this chair? No, like physically. Oh, you know, like grumpy daddy. <laughs> physically, no, no dad bod. You know. Oh come on, you don't have a dad bod. But, you know, Appreciate it. If, uh, if she saw him in the chair, she might change her mind. The king chair. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's really you know, <laughs> the king chair, chair. In a whole new it's light. Just, it's just the light, authority my of my position. Just respect the, the position. Okay. Last question. What position? The last question. I'm in the chair, bro. Uh, I'm okay. in the chair. Uh, last question. <laughs> is it harder to give up meat? Is it harder to give up alcohol? Or is it harder to give up sex? Okay, meat, alcohol, or, or sex. Or sex. You got to give up one of them. Which mm. is the hardest to give up? Oh, it's sex. Yeah? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Sex is a tough one. I don't know. I've just been You're always it. questioning my answer. No, no, I, I, I mean, I, you're I feel yeah. like you or, or, or alcohol you, or you cut, or you cut them down. An oh, that's really, that's not really that great. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, oh, I don't know. I have two kids, so uh, yeah. I, I gave up sex without even like giving it up. Like, you know, I didn't give it up, like consciously give it up, but I just kind of gave it up. So, so, yo, so for man. me, it's just like, I'm thinking about meat and alcohol in my personal life. So you um, go, you're a little one-sided? Okay. But so you're going with uh, sex. I'll yeah, let Eric, I'll open this up to Eric. Well, what are you going for? Yeah, I'm going sex too, man. I mean, like, think about this. Like, I could give up meat and alcohol, no problem. But like, living, less, living the less your, rest of your life without sex, I can't uh, imagine that. I will say when you have two kids and you're married... Uh, it's VPN time. VPN time. VPN time. Oh yeah, the uh, the, yeah yeah yeah. Or the or, yeah. the, or the occasional yeah. like, I, the occasional I gotta take a pee hard on. That's always great too. Right, 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 right. You gotta use those. Don't waste those. <laughs> Don't waste those now, bro. Um, okay, but be, okay. So we're we're kind of coming to the end of the end of the show. But I I want to do one thing that I I forgot to ask you when, about New York life. So now we all know Navi from Bali that mm-hmm. Dave introduced us mm-hmm. to. Just give me real quick, 
One super cool Navi story from, and for those who don't know, Navi is like the first Asian supermodel and Dave and her are like great friends and we met her and, and uh, now she's back in New York. What was Navi like back then? Cause we only know her now. Oh man, she was uh, really open and giving like as far as like life of the party, she knew everybody. Still um, is. Yeah, still is. Um, I mean, she was smoking hot. Like, I mean, oh, like, yeah, I mean yeah, she was yeah, like, yeah. like up there with like, like she was a supermodel. Yeah. I mean, she was like, and then she was. She did like Chanel. Asian, she did like, Chanel yeah. when like nobody was like. She was the first Asian girl to do Chanel or any she was of those doing big everything. Yeah, she was. It was. She came into New York gangbusters, and she was just messing blew it away. Right? Yeah, blew it away. It was great. And back in those days, New York was very small. Uh -huh. I mean, you can see the population nowadays has gone. And not to get political, but we've got a lot of. You know, back then, New York is very, very small. And anything had just, it was just 14th Street and below uh -huh. where anything happened. And every day of the week was usually just one place where people knew. It wasn't like now where you can go anywhere on a Tuesday night. So it was a very tight knit, lit, knit community when we'd, uh, and so I'd see her out a lot, you know? And that's a time when like uh, DiCaprio would be out and then like Kate Moss would be out. And then mm -hmm. that's that time that movie kids came out so that guys with skateboards would come into the club. Oh, and I remember that movie. It was just wow. a really different time. And it was only at like wax at like after 3 a.m. or spy bar between 12 and like, it was at that time was really decadent as far as like just being a kid. And that's like, if you want to go back and what's a good, great time for dating and stuff like that was just being young in New York, 24, 25, 26, 27 in New York city back in those days when, when everything was not commercialized and there was mm -hmm. no bottle service. Mm -hmm. It was, it was, it was before social media too, where people focus more on each other. And when you go get a napkin at the bar and write the, write yeah. the number down, one of those days, or you get the number yeah. and then you, you have to remember it like two, five, four, two, five, four. <laughs> right and on then, your hand. And, right then, your and hand. then you go to the bar and you're like, dick, 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 dick. and then your sweaty ass yes. hands and then like the five is kind of smudged out. You're like, damn. Is that a six? <laughs> Just <laughs> trying, a, trying every combination. <laughs> yeah, man. I don't know what we, I think I got off track again, but. Yeah, no, nah, man. Like, times. Shout out to Navi, man. She really took care of us when we we went to Bali a couple yeah. times, and be, you know because you hooked us up with her, she totally took care of us. I mean, like just we Bali wouldn't we wouldn't have had the same experience in Bali without her. Well, she is killing it over there. She's got how oh, many businesses? Like two spas, like two restaurants. Like I mean, it just sounds like from the time that she stepped into New York, blew that fucking scene away. It sounds like she's just been on just on the same shit just ever since. Like she's just mm. she's a boss. She's a boss. Like yeah, she moved out of New York like. Like on, only a few years I knew her, known her, and she just moved moved to like I think it was during two thousand two, then the whole like financial crisis over there in New York was going to get hit hard, and she took went to I don't know how she went to Bali, but it's, she you know, there. The, the thing that's amazing about her is like for her to be like basically what the first Asian supermodel. Yeah, that's crazy. And that to be days. that like giving and caring and like taking care of us from a, like a, I mean she didn't know us at all, you know. Yeah. But then the fact that she gave us that kind of like. Like love and attention, you know, through you. Like, <laughs> Did you get that camera? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. No, definitely thankful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, shit. I guess that uh, that probably brings us uh, to the close. To, but to the close, yeah. thank you so much, Dave, for for coming out and and being on the podcast. Yeah, man. Um, again, me and Eric always prepare a ton of shit, and then we get sidetracked and we don't get to it. I think if we wouldn't have done the so, deep dive on the so DIY. Like, so like, should I just not bring my laptop anymore? <laughs> like, <laughs> Eric's always got it. I, and I look got, at all the notes. I got like a huge outline here for every day. We're wow. definitely gonna have homework. It's we're, crazy. We're definitely gonna have to have you back at some point and get to some of this stuff. I'd love um, to be back. Yeah. yeah. So um, yeah. once again, thanks for coming out and hanging out with us today. Yeah, man. And uh, awesome. A little dap. Yeah. Little dap. Yeah, brother. And, you guys uh, can hear that I'm out there. Give, I'm gonna give you the oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> a broken finger. But definitely. Uh, yeah, man. We'll see you again, if not before Thanksgiving dinner, you know? Yeah, man. Appreciate it, Dave. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in like Flynn. All right, bro. Yep. Thanks, y'all. Phase two, episode five. Hell yeah. All right. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Okay.